holds a nice chisel edge, and the very end of the paintbrush is the chisel edge. So we're going to begin to make some line work using our flat brush, and to do this, we're going to aim the handle of our brush straight up toward the ceiling, and we will want to put almost no pressure on the brush. So I'm going to try to hold the handle off to the side a little bit so you can see, but for you it's going to be easier to hold the brush handle pointing straight up to the ceiling, and we're going to touch our brush to our work surface and put no pressure on the brush and begin to pull toward us, creating a fine, even line. Okay? Okay. So this is really helping you uh, learn to control the amount of pressure that you're going to put on your brush and control the speed at which you move your brush across the surface. So that's simply creating a line using our flat brush. Now the other thing that we're going to do is you can make what we just simply call a basic stroke by touching the brush to the surface, applying no pressure, and pulling the brush along. So that will give you a brush stroke that is the width of your flat brush. And you can do this so that you can skip the width of your flat brush and do another stroke. And then you can fill in between, and this can give you a quick and easy kind of way to make a checkerboard look. But this is the basic stroke with no pressure on your brush. So that's touching the brush to the surface, applying no pressure, and pulling to create a flat stroke. This is all about learning how to control the amount of pressure that you put on your flat brush. You can also make a basic stroke using a tremendous amount of pressure on your brush so that when you touch the brush to the surface and apply pressure, you can create an extremely wide stroke. So same brush, two different size strokes. No pressure, a lot of pressure on your brush. And you need to know um, that you can do this because there will be times when you're painting and you'll need to apply a lot of pressure to your brush and you can cover a larger area or use minimum pressure and cover a smaller area. It's all about you being in control of your tools. So let's paint uh, what we will call a comma stroke, and we are combining a line stroke and a basic stroke. So angle your brush uh, so that it's uh, kind of at a 45 degree angle to your paper, and we are going to touch our flat brush down. We are going to apply pressure on the flat brush, and I'm going to begin to pull and then raise the brush off the surface while pulling and dragging the brush to a point. I did not twist the brush. I did not turn the brush. I simply guided the brush, remaining at the 45 degree angle, but I released the pressure at a very controlled angle as I moved the brush slowly to form the stroke. It's a lot of information to take in there, so let's do it again. We're going to touch the brush to the surface. We're going to apply pressure on the brush. You have to press so that there is some way for you to release the pressure, lift the brush, and then drag the brush to a point. That is a comma stroke. That was a comma stroke to the left. Let's turn our brush the other direction and do a comma stroke to the right. So same stroke. We're going to touch the brush to the surface. We're going to apply pressure. And we're going to lift and we're going to drag the brush to a point. So, same stroke, two different directions. This is where the control starts to come in. And you will need to be in control of your tools as you use them. So, this was a combination of a basic stroke and a line stroke. And now we're going to add an additional line stroke to our uh, stroke work. So we're going to do a line stroke, and then uh, kind of a comma stroke, and we're going to combine it to make an S-shaped stroke. So here we go. I'm going to stand the brush on its chisel edge. I'm going to make a line stroke. Then I'm going to slide and apply pressure on the brush, and then I'm going to lift up and slide back to a chisel edge. So that creates the line of an S stroke. So we'll do that again. Moving over here so I don't uh, come off the 
edge of the camera, so I want you to see what we're doing. And we will make another S-shaped stroke. We'll stand the brush up on a chisel edge. We'll slide, apply pressure on the brush, lift and slide back to a chisel edge, creating a graceful S-shaped stroke. Don't do this. Don't do a zigzag or rip-rack look where you slide, press, slide, press, slide. That's not what we're looking for. We want a graceful S shape. So we'll start again on the chisel edge of the brush. We'll touch the brush to the surface. We'll slide, we'll apply pressure to the brush, and then we'll lift back up and end on the chisel edge again. So that's a S stroke to the right. Let's make an S stroke to the left. So once again, I'm going to stand the brush on the chisel edge. I'm going to slide down. I'm going to apply pressure on the flat brush. I'm going to lift back up and release pressure back on the chisel edge of the brush, creating a graceful S stroke. Let's let me show off a little bit here, show you what you can do. I'm just adjusting the consistency of my paint here on the palette. You want to make sure that your paint is always fluid and ready to go. Let me sit this off to the side for a moment. And we're going to combine a number of S-strokes together, and we're going to create a beautiful ribbon effect. So, holding the brush on the chisel edge, I'm going to touch the brush to the surface. I'm going to slide, apply pressure, lift, and slide, apply pressure, lift and slide, apply pressure, lift and slide, and apply pressure, lift and slide. So you can create a beautiful, graceful uh, ribbon effect. And all of that was done with one uh, filling of the brush. So make sure your brush is completely full of paint. There are a couple of other little strokes that you should be able to do. And all of this requires time and practice. So let's do a couple of other strokes here. We need to be able to form a U shape with our flat brush. So we're going to stand the brush on the chisel edge. I'm going to touch, apply pressure, and form a U shape, and then lift back up on the chisel edge and form the other portion of the U. So that is a U shape stroke, and we can do it the other direction. Start at the chisel edge, apply pressure, slide across, and then lift back up on the chisel edge, and we've created an upside down U stroke. So by, by being able to uh, manipulate our brush, we can create brush strokes in many different directions, all without having to move our work surface, so it makes us a much more efficient painter. And you need to be able to take some time to practice all of these sort of strokes so that when you are ready to paint something that, and you want your brush to do something, you can make it happen without any problems. Let's do a half circle stroke. All this time we've been holding the brush like a pencil while we've been using this. And I generally hold my paintbrush where my ferrule, that's the metal part of the brush, meets the wooden handle. So that's where I hold the brush. But to do a half circle stroke, I'm going to hold the brush between my thumb and my fingers so that I can pivot the brush uh, on a given anchor spot. So I'm going to set the brush down. I'm going to keep one part of the brush in place and I'm simply going to roll the brush around so that I create a half circle. And I can do that in both directions, upside down and right side up because I have spent the time practicing uh, in order to be able to manipulate the brush to do that. And I'm going to see if I can do a complete circle. I may not be able to do that, but we're going to give it a try. So touch the brush down, keeping one spot anchored, and roll the brush around, creating a complete circle. So you can, and that's definitely not a perfect circle, but it gives um, the, the practice that you gain from being able to manipulate the brush to create that shape uh, is very important. So let's set all of these strokes aside and let me show you another uh, thing that is 
important to know how to do because it can help you make uh, it can make your life a little easier when you're painting, and that is to carry more than one color on your brush at the same time. So some people will call this double loading or multi loading. So I'm using two colors of the matte folk art acrylic. I am using wild rose and ballet pink uh, for this exercise. And I'm also using a three quarter inch flat brush. And I'm going to begin to load the brush by walking it into a puddle of paint. And then I'm going to move to a clean spot on my palette and pat that color into the brush. And I've rolled the brush over. So I'm working that uh, wild rose into half the brush by working the color through on both sides. And then I'll come over here and do the same thing with the ballet pink. So just walk the color into the ballet pink. And then I will come back to the same spot on the palette. And I'm going to begin to work these two colors into the brush, picking up more of both colors as I need them. And this is how we get two colors on the brush at the same time. And we're able to create a nice gradation from one color into the other. And this happens to be um, two different uh, colors on the brush at the same time. And in this case, to make sure that this is easy enough to flow, I'm going to touch my brush into my water basin and then always block the bristles on a shop towel so that not too much water gets into my uh, loading zone here on the palette. But I just keep working the color into the brush. And this is an essential thing to be able to do with a flat brush so that if I were, say, to apply shading next to an object, I can simply do this by patting that color on and creating a nice shaded edge next to that. And I'm doing this patting motion so that I'm not trying to create a perfectly smooth edge of shaded color there, but I do create that illusion of a bit of a shadow going on over there. So I can shade on the other side of this. Again, touch your brush down, pat that color on, and I'm painting on an unsealed paper surface, so my paint is being absorbed into the surface rather quickly. If this will help. And this works well with oil paint or acrylic paint, but this really isn't um, a technique uh, that you would really do with watercolors. But the important thing is to make sure that your paint is the proper uh, consistency. And so I'm going to take a moment and just mix up my uh, wild rose by adding a little bit of water to it because we want our paint to be a beautiful, fluid consistency. Remember, it's going to be the consistency of bird droppings or bird poop. And that is what you want to remember and so we're going to mix the paint by mashing it with our brush and dropping it off of our palette knife that's still a little thick there. So we're going to add some more water to that to make sure that our paint is nice and fluid for brush stroke work. So it drops off beautifully there. So I'm going to set my palette knife off to the side, make sure to clean it. I'm going to wipe my flat brush and now I'm going to load my flat brush with my, um, what color is this, Calypso Sky and Wild Rose. So I'm blending it here on the palette and you can see that we're creating a nice gradient from uh, rose to blue. Making sure that my brush is thoroughly filled with paint. Looks like a bomb pop. <laughs> Always referring to food and candy here. All right, so we're working the color into our brush, making sure that we pay attention to how we're flipping uh, the brush back and forth. And then we can do uh, stroke work this way. So I'm just gonna do a bit of a stroke here. Touch, apply pressure, lift, 
and drag to a point, and that way we get a beautiful graded uh, stroke. So double loading for stroke work or for adding shading is an essential technique, as well as learning uh, the basic brush strips with a flat brush. Things you should absolutely practice until you can do them beautifully and without having to think or stress about them. So this is just a little information on how to use a flat brush. And we will be back next week with another YouTube live stream and we will talking about we, we will be talking about round brush essentials. So join us next week at 3 p.m. Eastern time for another YouTube live stream.